Welcome to the regularly scheduled uh, January 14th meeting of the Waterloo City Council. Uh, we have a good crowd tonight in chambers, so welcome to all of you. And any of you that might be watching on our public access television tonight, uh, welcome to you also. Madam Clerk, would you start us by reading the roll, please? Yes, Ms. Cole. Here. Mr. Getty. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mr. Greenwood. Here. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Welper. Here. Mr. Hart. Here. Very good. Thank you. If you would all join me, please, in standing for just a moment of silent reflection or prayer, be much appreciated. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, our pledge tonight is going to, oh, I'm leading the pledge tonight. Wow, <laughs> how does it start? If you would all join me please in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge I allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, God indivisible, with, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you may be seated. Surprise me like that. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Hart, please. I'd like to move that we approve an amended agenda. And the amendment, first one is in number nine. And that is to change the amount to $735,293.45. And also in number 12, to change the wording to include waiver of purchase option. Um, in our, uh, what do we call them, our public information, I believe, um, delete items number two and number three on contract payment schedule and add an item for ASPRO is number four. Um, along with the amended agenda, I also move that we approve the minutes of our January 7th, 2013 regular session. Second. Thank you, Council Mahar. Quest uh, Council, do you have uh, any questions or comments regarding the agenda or the minutes either? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. Uh, we're going to start tonight with our first proclamation of the year and a, a most worthy one at that. I'm not sure who all is coming up. Latanya, are you coming up to, to, to get this? This is regarding, uh, we're declaring Monday. January 21st as Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and we have a proclamation stating that. Good evening. Good How are you? Good. You look awfully nice tonight. Yeah. You bet. City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation. Whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. changed our nation forever through his leadership, service, and clarity of vision. On the Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. Federal Holiday, we honor the lasting legacy of this great American, remember the ideals for which he fought, and recommit ourselves to ensuring that our country's promise extends to all Americans across this great land. And whereas Dr. King devoted his life to strengthening the content of the American character and called on our nation to live up to its founding principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all of its citizens. And whereas Dr. King's faith gave him the courage to confront discrimination and segregation, and he preached that all the powers of evil are ultimately no match for even one individual armed with eternal truths. Through his determination, spirit, and resolve, Dr. King helped lift souls and lead one of the greatest movements in history for equality and freedom. And whereas our nation has made progress toward realizing Dr. King's dream, yet the work to achieve liberty and justice for all is never ending. We must continue to protect the rights won through the sacrifice of Dr. King and other civil rights leaders. Our nation must never rest until equality is real, opportunity is universal, and all citizens are empowered to realize their dreams. And whereas, as we observe Dr. King's birthday, I encourage all to celebrate, celebrate his memory by performing acts of kindness through service to others. Let us live out Dr. King's teaching as we continue to work for the day when the dignity and humanity of every person is respected. 
Now therefore, I, Buck Clark, mayor of the city of Waterloo, do hereby call upon all citizens of Waterloo to join in the national observance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday on Monday, January 21st, 2013, and encourage all to observe the day with appropriate civic, community, and service programs and activities in honor of Dr. King's life and legacy. So Tanya, you want to make, say a couple of words here, please? What, 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 wait, 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 don't say it yet. Oh, nobody okay. will hear you. Right, no, okay. Nobody in TV land will hear you. The so. banquet is uh, Sunday, January 20th, 5 o'clock at the Five Sullivan Brothers Convention Center. Tickets are $40, uh, $320 for a table of eight, $20 for students 18 and younger. And if you need tickets, just call me, 319-296-4440. And it will be our 34th annual banquet. Oh, Tanya, thank you so much. Thank you. thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Okay, uh, we also get to recognize a couple of uh, people tonight, uh, a couple of ladies, as a matter of fact. Uh, th it's time for our January team member of the month, and it is an incredible honor, privilege for me to introduce Michelle Westfall to you. And Michelle, if you would please stand. Michelle is my assistant and my confidant and my secretary and uh, pretty much runs the mayor's office uh, when I'm there and when I'm not. Uh, Michelle keeps my schedule. Uh, she keeps everything and I absolutely don't know what I do without her. And we were, we were very fortunate this month to uh, have Michelle nominated as the January Team Member of the Month for really something kind of specific that she did last fall or spring or last year sometime. When plants were uh, all coming due, Michelle separated a bazillion plants in her, from her garden, put them all in little pots and brought them all into the mayor's office and did a plant sale <coughs> all by herself, all for our purposes of our partners in education. So. I, I, I forgot how much money you raised, Michelle, but it was it was a lot, and it was incredible, and it was all due to your hard work. So I, I am just just thrilled to be able to announce our January 2000, 2013 Team Member of the Month to be Michelle Westfall. So Michelle, congratulations. <laughs> and. Uh, as most of you know, that we have a team member of the month that I started when I took office. So we do this with, uh, with some deserving member of our team throughout the year, every month. We recognize somebody. But at the end of the year, we recognize a team member of the year. <coughs> and uh, this year, I, I'm not on the committee that recognizes the team member of the year. But I can't imagine what a difficult job it would have been to recognize and to pick the team member of the year. But uh, I, I will tell you that Gladys Rainey was our team member of the year, and she is with our housing department and has been with us for quite some time, and Gladys does just an incredible job, always steps up and, and does more than is asked and is, is expected. So Gladys, why don't you come up, please? And again. Quite an honor, Gladys, to be able to recognize you as our team member of the year for 2000, 2000, 2012. And Gladys gets this plaque that says, Team Member of the Year 2012, presented to Gladys Rainey for excellence and dedication within the city workforce in the delivery of services to our customers, the citizens, and fellow team members. Gladys, uh, a sincere congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's <laughs> All right, what, uh, what fun things to do. Uh, you ladies, uh, neither of you have to stay if you don't want to. And you can see Michelle didn't want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, so don't feel compelled to, to stay for the rest of the meeting. Thanks for coming, though, both of you. Those are, uh, those are just great events. Um, let's go ahead and get started and, and do, some, uh, do some business here, Mr. Hart. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move that we receive, place on file, and approve the consent agenda items 1A 
through C1. And also with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we approve the bills payment schedule, which will be read by our finance chair. The bills this week are $1,353,935.91. That is 1, 1,353,935.91. Zero. Uh, excuse me, second. Sand is zero. Thank you, Mr. Numbers. Smith Sorry about and Mr. Hart. Council, do you have any questions, any of you, regarding our consent agenda tonight? It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. I need to abstain on a payment of $45 to Schmidt Telecom Partners for work done on behalf of the city. Okay, perfect. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. <coughs> Very good, thank you. The, count, uh, the consent agenda is adopted. Uh, we have a couple of people tonight, and I'm not sure, Beverly Cosby, I know is here. Beverly, if you would just stand up and, and be recognized, please. Uh, <coughs> Beverly Cosby has been appointed to the position of <coughs> Waterloo Housing Authority Coordinator uh, in our housing department, effective January 22nd, I believe. So Beverly, uh, welcome uh, to the city, welcome to our staff. and. And we're very pleased to have you, and we hope we have a long and prosperous relationship. So thank you for saying yes to the City of Waterloo. <laughs> and we have Michael McDonald, and I don't know Michael. So Michael, are you here? Senator. Michael is not here, but uh, Michael's been uh, appointed to the position of plant maintenance mechanic, effective January 22nd also. So <coughs> welcome aboard, Michael, if you're out there watching. Uh, okay, let's go ahead uh, and do item number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number two, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file proof of publication and notice of public hearing, and that's for the purchase of a John Deere 5115M tractor and attachments. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are there any written objections to item number two on file? There were none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against the city buying a new tractor and attachments? Second time. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? No, sir. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution confirming approval of specifications, bid con document, et cetera. Second. Madam Clerk, that's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. <coughs> Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. It's a roll call vote, too, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to receive and file and instruct the city clerk to open and read bids and refer to Leisure Services Director for review. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motion carries. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would do us the honors, please. Uh, we have uh, four bidders, or no, what do we have? One, one, just the one bidder tonight, and we have an estimate of $60,000 on this tractor, so we'll see what comes in. Ms. Clerk, please. Madam Clerk. The bid is from John Deere through Waterloo Implement. And it is a state bid. And the bid is for $78,616.22, 78, 616.22, sorry, with a $20,000 trade-in value on our tractor and mower, which will make it $58,616.22. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Paul, if you could come get that, please. Item number three, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Getty. Make a motion to receive and file proof of publication and notice of public hearing of the request of the Black Hawk Contracting and Development on the sale of and conveyance of city-owned property, otherwise known as lot number 12, <coughs> lot 14 of the second edition to Grandview Place 
for the purpose of constructing single-family housing. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the hearing is now open. <coughs> Madam Clerk, were there any written objections to item number three? There were none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item number three on tonight's agenda, the conveyance of a lot for single housing development? Second time. Mr. Mayor, make a motion to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? Sec um, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Mr. Mayor, make a motion. We adopt a resolution authorizing said sale and conveyance and authorize the city attorney to prepare and deliver the deed accordingly. Second. Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Thank you. Very good, thank you. If we could do the resolutions, please. Uh, I, I believe we may have some people in the audience that would like to speak to item number five. So let's take number four and number five separately, please, tonight. If somebody could do number four. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart? Move to adopt a resolution approving the cancellation of Tuesday, January 22nd, 2013, City Council meeting due to the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Second. Second. Very good. It's a roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt? <coughs> yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Uh, item number five, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Welp. Number five is a resolution denying the relocation of an existing Waterloo business, SKS Communications, to LaPorte City, Iowa, allowing for LaPorte City to give business incentives for said relocation efforts. Second. Uh, very good. There's been a motion and a second, and while I don't, it's not a hearing, so there's, uh, there's no uh, mandate to allow anybody to speak to this particular resolution. I have understood there may be somebody here in the audience that would like to speak to item number five tonight. If that's the case, uh, now is the time to please step to the microphone. Yes, sir. Just give us your name and your address, please. Limit your comments to three minutes, if you would, please. Okay. Uh, Mark Schmitz, uh, 121 Meadow Lane, LaPorte City, Iowa. Okay, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, I'm president of SKS Communications. We currently uh, rent some uh, office space uh, here in Waterloo, obviously. Um, we have never owned a building up here. It was never our intent to own a building up here. We've, I'm from LaPorte City. I've always lived there. Um, we have purchased a building uh, in LaPorte uh, that, we have, that we're going to tear down and build a new building uh, there. That's been in process for over a year. Uh, it's my understanding that this uh, approval based on tax dollars, I'm not an attorney, I don't know a lot about it, but from what I've heard, it's pretty new, like just happened like this year or something of that nature. So uh, all the negotiations uh, that we've been doing with LaPorte City uh, over the last year uh, kind of got uh, the rug pulled out from under us, I feel like, not by per se you guys, but uh, the law itself or whatever happened. Um, it's going to make a huge impact on the building that we can, um, I guess, build in Laporte um, if, this, if the expenses that we've planned on, um, the tax abate abatements and things aren't approved, uh, if you guys don't approve us to move our building over there. So uh, again, I coach all the sports over in Laporte. Uh, it's just a matter of convenience. That's where we live. Most of our employees live in Laporte City. Um, we're going to be building a building there. We're going to be moving our business there uh, in approximately a year from now. Uh, it's just a matter of if we get the tax relief dollars uh, that we've negotiated with LaPorte City. And obviously, we can't do that unless you guys approve it to happen. So thank you very much. <coughs> Appreciate it. Council, do you have any questions of Mr. Schmitz at this time anyway? Uh, I have some comments, but I'm going to defer first to Noel Anderson. Noel, if you could uh, kind of explain uh, again to Council exactly why we're here, and then also explain why your recommendation, uh, recommendation is for denial, please. Sure. Uh, Noel Anderson, Community Planning and Development Director. And the, uh, as Mr. Schmitz noted, the state law was changed this year. Um, one of the various changes that they made to the TIF district laws was that uh, any city where a company is, is existing in wants to move to another city and that other city wants to give incentives, um, the existing city lo must give approval for that. Um, staff has recommended denial of this uh, based on our economic development plan, policies, obviously everything we have. 
um, that's been approved um, through how we proceed with these types of projects is that we work as hard as we can to offer incentives to retain our existing businesses and draw new ones here. Um, nothing against uh, SKS or Mr. Schmitz or anything. Um, we just believe we're following the policy in our recommendation of denial. Okay. Then we don't have any questions from Mr. Anderson at this point. Mm -hmm. Mr. Greenwood? So have, have they have they ever received any type of TIF <coughs> benefit, the company they rent here? They rent uh, currently in the, in the River Plaza building. They are renting space there. They have not received any benefits here directly. Um, if there would have been improvements to that building by the landowner, they could have passed them through to them, but I don't believe that they have. Um, and they have not received any benefits from LaPorte City at this point. And any flood? I mean, the River Plaza building did have uh, flood money going to that. Um, again, that would have went to uh, the Nelsons owned that building. Um, so whether or not they would have received that through some kind of a smaller rent amount or something, I'm not aware of. So if a, if a business in Waterloo, have, have they approached us about, uh, I mean, so they, they want to move, they, they've got a, a deal with, with LaPorte City, and, uh, but they have no ties to any TIFs here, any type of incentives they're getting here. Correct. <clears throat> they basically want to go back home from the area that they're, right. they're from, live at. I mean, I, I can see. Yeah, they just rent space here. They do not own a building. Okay. I, I, so they're not getting anything directly from the city that I'm aware of. So do they have to have our recommendation to proceed to get TIF financing in LaPorte City? They do, because they are listed as a Waterloo business with a location here. To get Mr. LaPorte Mayor, City Mr. TIF. Mr. Schmidt? No, you know, some of us have maybe had a little bit further conversation about this, but if you could maybe explain, you know, why this is happening. And, and basically, as I understand it, the, the state did this so that the cities will stop this raiding each other's business communities like what we've seen in Iowa City and Cedar Rapids and places like that. Is that kind Correct. of in a nutshell and has nothing to do with this particular case, just has to do with whether or not we're going to set the precedent of come and get our businesses uh, and we're not going to do anything about it. I mean, this basically goes back about a year ago. The state has been looking at TIF districts and the, and the monies accumulated in them. Um, of particular interest was Coralville and Iowa City. Um, a certain amount of incentives were given by Coralville to a Yonkers development um, that came from the Iowa City area. Um, that enraged some people, obviously, in Iowa City um, and some others that uh, saw similar concerns across the state. So the state came up with these procedures um, to where TIF incentives could not be used to draw a business from one city to another without approval. Mr. Getty, did you have a question? Well, I just wanted to make sure a yes vote is to deny it. Is that correct? Yes. And a no vote is to let them go home. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and, and just, uh, Council, I'll also give you an opportunity, but uh, a couple of comments from, from me, if you don't mind. Uh, I, I commend Noel, and I think Noel is doing exactly what a planner should do and in following the, the TIF guidelines and trying to keep business in Waterloo. Having said that, uh, I, I think there is a potential for setting precedent for this particular case, but there are also, also an awful lot of particulars in this case that I think are worth noting. And in this particular case, I think we should handle this based on the uh, evidence of this particular case rather than worrying about setting precedent. Uh, I think as Mr. Greenwood uh, properly noted, SKS has not received any incentives from Waterloo at all. They are renting in Waterloo. They live in Waterloo. Uh, they would like to build their business in, Wa excuse me, in LaPorte, LaPorte City. They would like to build their business in LaPorte City. And uh, I, I would uh, respectfully disagree with Mr. Anderson's opinion on this, and I think we should grant them the opportunity, grant LaPorte City the opportunity to give them uh, TIF incentives for this project. Uh, Council, have any other questions or comments? Okay, it's a roll call vote, and a no vote does allow them to receive the incentives. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Welper? No. Mr. Hart? No. Ms. Cole? No. Mr. Getty? No. Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Greenwood? No. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. No. <laughs> okay, uh, it was uh, six to one. And uh, the motion does fail. 
which means that LaPorte City is free to give the incentives to your business, Mr. Smith. Thank you for coming. Thanks for the input. Uh, let's do items six, seven, and eight, please, Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move that we adopt a resolution approving the rejection of grant agreement with the Iowa Department of Transportation in the amount of $500,000 for the traffic safety grant <coughs> West Forth and Fletcher, CS, TSF, 8155-72485-07. Number seven, I move that we approve a change order, number one, net increase for $28,314.58 for work performed by B&B Builders and supply of Waterloo, Iowa on the FY 2012 sidewalk repair program, zone two contract number 824. I uh, move that we um, adopt a resolution approving completion of project and recommendation of acceptance of work performed by B&B Builders and Supply of Waterloo, Iowa at a total cost of $123,704.08 in conjunction with FY 2012 Sidewalk Repair Program Zone 2, contract number 824, and receive and file two-year maintenance bond. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding 6, 7, or 8? Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? <coughs> yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Uh, no on six, yet. yes on seven and eight. <coughs> Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Wilper? Yes. Very good. The motions carry. Let's do 9, 10, and 11, please. Mr. Mayor? Ms. Cole? Move we adopt a resolution approving completion of project and recommendation of acceptance of work performed by Veith Construction Corp of Cedar Falls at a total cost of $735,293.45 in conjunction with FY 2010 Cedar River Water Trail contract number 734. 10 is another resolution approving a supplemental agreement number 9 with AECOM for FY 2013 U.S. Highway 63 <coughs> improvements from Congress Street, Newell Street to Donald Street, contract number 790, and authorize mayor to execute said document. 11 is a resolution approving a contract with Benton Sand and Gravel, Inc. in the amount of $15,000. $650 in conjunction with demolition and site clearance services with regulated asbestos containing materials for 936 West 7th Street. Second. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Cole. Council, do you have any questions or concerns regarding 9, 10, or 11? Mr. Mayor, <clears throat> well, I just would like to extend a couple of thank yous in regards to number 11. Uh, especially to the, the neighbors that have had to look at that property, I believe, since June 20th. Um, I sure really appreciate their patience. Uh, the legal process sometimes takes time. And, and, and again, I'd like to thank the city for stepping up and, and, and knocking this down. Uh, you know, it kind of got put on our shoulders. And thank you for that as well. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Welper. Those are words well said, because uh, you're right on all accounts. Further comments? It's a roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. Uh, those uh, items do pass. Uh, let's do number 12 as we did number 5. Uh, Council, if you don't mind, please, I believe we do have people that would like to speak to that issue. So if we do number 12 by itself, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt? Number 12, I'd like to adopt a resolution waiving any option to purchase or other rights of acquisition that the City of Waterloo may possess and approving the allowance of Main Street Waterloo to sell the parking lot located in Block 14 of the original plat of Waterloo East on Lafayette Street between East 4th Street and East 5th Street to JSA development, subject to mortgage payoff and release of the City of Waterloo's loan guarantee with respect to said property. Second. Very good. Motion and second on item number 12. Uh, I will open the microphone, open the floor to anyone that would like to speak to that issue. If you would please step to the microphone, give us your name and address. <coughs> please limit your comments to three minutes if there's anyone yeah, that would like to speak. because they're lawyers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mr. Johnson is familiar with the time limit. I think he'll, he'll, he'll adhere to the three minutes, I hope. Uh, Mayor, council members, I'm here today on behalf of the Beecher Law Firm. Just for the record, if you'd give us your name and address. Eric, oh, Eric Johnson. Um, 1909 Crab Apple Lane. 
Thank you. Um, I'm here today on behalf of the Beecher Law Firm. We own the adjoining property to this. Um, a little history and background, our firm's been in downtown Waterloo since 1918. We've been in our current building since 1964. We currently employ 40 plus people. Our tenant on the first floor, Roth Jewelers, has been a fixture in downtown Waterloo. Um, we like our location. We want to stay in our location. And we've been attempting to buy this parking lot since 2007. Um, initially contacting Mayor Hurley, um, but since 2007, we've been attempting to buy this parking lot. Um, the offer to sell this to JSA or Jim Walsh's company, um, uh, we have no animosity towards Mr. Walsh. Um, he's done a lot of great uh, things downtown here in Waterloo, but at the end of the day, he's still a competitor of ours, and uh, we, uh, we feel uncomfortable with him owning that parking lot. We would like to own that parking lot, something that we've expressed throughout. No different than if the parking lot right outside this door was for sale, and the city of Evansdale, a great city, wanted to buy that parking lot next door, that would make you folks a little uncomfortable too. We want to own that parking lot, and so we've done what you would normally do in this situation. We've made an offer. In fact, there's been some back and forth, but we've ended up making the highest offer on this property, and we think we should get this property. Um, now, I don't know if we're comparing apples to apples because we have found out about some other things through the paper and after the fact, but uh, there may be some other things that uh, Mr. Walsh is throwing in on his offer that we've read about in the paper, but um, you know, we're willing to throw in some other things too to make this deal happen. Um, you know, at the end of the day, um, we want to control our destiny in downtown Waterloo. We'd like to acquire this lot. Um, we're not developers, okay, we're attorneys. Um, if there is land that wants to be developed, JSA owns three times this amount of land right across the street on 4th Street, on 5th Street, and on Lafayette. There's plenty of land for them to develop before they need this lot. Um, and so we'd simply request the council deny this request and allow us to purchase this lot for the higher price. Questions? Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Council, do you have any questions of Mr. Johnson? Mayor? Uh, Mr. Wilper. Uh, Eric, uh, I believe um, JSA was going to offer 7% um, <coughs> for the profit on managing of that parking lot. Were, were you going to do that same kind of offer to Main Street? Um, we would be glad to do that. Our office manager said uh, uh, she would be delighted not to have to deal with the parking lot and to pay 7% to have someone else deal with it. <clears throat> so yeah, we'd be glad to offer that. It, is that Main Street's reason for choosing JSA versus you? Um, I initially had some conversations with Jeff, and then I stepped out and a couple of my partners, John Walker and Rick Morris, had some conversations. At some point in time, an offer came in from Jim, and then the negotiations ended at that point in time. Now, Jeff will probably say there's a little bit more to that, and maybe my partners will say that there's a little bit more to that, because there always is. Um, but we were never countered to throw that in. I, I learned about that in the paper. Um, uh, the other day and so um, you know we have talked as a firm and we would offer the same. Mr. Schmidt. So Eric was the I mean was the proposal and I guess we're not talking about a proposal but the, the, the opportunity was it who's gonna who's gonna pay the highest price I mean is that as you understood it and and as I read the documentation you guys offered ten thousand dollars more than the than the other firm. Well, um, generally that's how properties are sold. Who's going to pay the higher price? I mean, sometimes, as, as we all know, there are other considerations that come into it, but I think in this instance, who is going to pay the higher price is the um, ultimate consideration. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I am looking at a document here that's in my packet that says JSA or a related entity will agree to invest a minimum of $2 million mm -hmm in improvements into downtown Waterloo properties during the next 24 months. Is that a question or a statement? I'm, I think it's a <laughs> statement. I mean, I'm, I'm waiting to... Um, 
maybe Main Street should step up. And yeah, and, and that's it, it maybe uh, unless somebody else has a specific question for Mr. Johnson at yeah. this time, well, if well, we could have well, somebody else. Well, as, as I indicated, Ms. Cole, we're not developers, we're attorneys. Mm -hmm. I know um, that. Okay. <laughs> We've just put 350000 into our building last year, not to mention the HVAC, which is probably another hundred on top of that. Yes, at least. And uh, what people are going to do in the future, you know, I don't know. I do know. Our, next you know, 24 months, next two years, $2 million. I, 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 that's what it says. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Mr. Johnson. We'll, uh, we may have future questions. Uh, would anybody else like to speak, please? Uh, I, I, hesitate to call on people, but Mr. Kurtz, I think it would be appropriate if you would uh, offer Main Street's <coughs> opinion. Jeff Kurtz, 521 Derbyshire, and uh, Executive Director of Main Street Waterloo. Um, we essentially approached the situation with the parking lot, first determining whether it was in Main Street's best interest to retain ownership of it. And after much discussion, we determined that it was not for a variety of reasons. Um, we feel that it's best held by a developer where it can reach its, its fullest potential. Uh, we don't want to be in competition with other entities, private entities. Um, and we're concerned about our ability to maintain that lot in the future from a financial point of view. So um, we did have conversations with entities who we felt were uh, most appropriate, uh, one of which, of course, was the city. Um, and we're well aware of, of the Beecher Law Firm's uh, interest in the lot. Um, we're also aware of their uneasiness with JSA. That's unfortunate. We wish that were not the case. Um, their offer was um, considered equally to JSA's. And there were a couple of other uh, factors beyond just the selling price that motivated our, our decision. Um, one is, as already mentioned, the, the work that is happening in downtown uh, by JSA. We feel that the, the property in their hands, uh, JSA's record in downtown Waterloo speaks for itself, and we feel that that property is in, in good hands. Uh, the management fee uh, that was included in that offer uh, was another motivating factor. Uh, it's unlikely that we would reverse course at this point. We're in, we did not undertake this trying to gouge either bidder for the highest price. Our motivation is what is in the best interest of downtown, what is in the best interest of Waterloo, and we carefully weighed both of these proposals. Uh, we have great respect for both entities. We, we want there to be a, a peaceful outcome. But ultimately, we had to make a choice. We had to make a choice between either retaining ownership or selling to one of these two entities. And after carefully weighing all of those factors, uh, we, we made this decision. Uh, so it was over a year's worth of discussion and, and, and uh, uh, work on this project. We, we've made our decision. Uh, Mr. Kurtz, when you say we, who is we? Uh, the Main Street Board of Directors. Council, you have questions of Mr. Kurtz. Uh, just one quick question. Um, Jeff, when, when, when this was um, originally um, brought to the table that you guys wanted to sell the property, um, you approached the abutting property owners, but you approached them about purchasing it. Correct. Um, was there a specific date or time where you said we need a, some type of um, agreement, you know, by October 5th, by December? Was there a particular date and time in which you wanted to have those proposals? There, there really wasn't. It was a very open-ended process. Um, we initiated discussions in February, we received uh, the, we didn't receive the notice <coughs> from the Beecher Law Firm until October, um, mm -hmm. and we considered it after that date. So, okay. And was this um, um, and and was the was the were the offers finalized at the time that you received? And was there any negotiations that took place after, for instance, um, one group sends you? Um, a proposal, another one sends a proposal, then there's further conversation afterwards, or did you receive the proposals and that was pretty much it? We'll take it and we'll move forward from what we have in existence. Uh, we considered the two proposals based on what was initially in front of us. We did not go after counter offers and things like that. Again, okay. our motivation is not to uh, try and leverage the highest price from either of these entities, but rather 
you know, our, our underlying <coughs> motivation was what is the best interest for downtown as regards this space? Okay. Okay. And then, uh, I'm sorry. Well, I, I, thought you were Go ahead. I was just wondering, um, the 7% of collected rev, uh, rental revenue, how much does that calculate out to be per year or month? Do we know? Is that thousand dollars? $50. Several thousand a year, as I recall. I don't have an exact number, but that's my initial recollection. So. Okay. Mr. Jones? Uh, I was just wondering if it would be appropriate to table this to allow the private parties to... Well, let's, let's finish the conversation, and then we'll discuss what our options are. Mr. Schmidt? Did, did you want to say something? Well, I've, Mr. Mayor, I, I was just going to say that every time we uh, look to sell a piece of property, uh, we look at the proposals made for that property and then we decide who we are agreeing to sell it to. As of right now, we seem to have a, unless we hear from JSA what, what they're planning on doing with the lot, we have an even wash here. Okay. Oh, uh, well, and, and I was just going to say, you know, I'm not sure that uh, uh, Main Street is necessarily governed the same way the city would be, but, but it seems to me that, uh, you know, as council members, it's incumbent upon us to take what is the best offer for the taxpayers, which would be the highest offer. Um, I, I'm a little bit troubled by the, you know, the other things that are added on. I mean, this, this to me was not a clear, concise, advertised, you know, let's, let's find out if there's somebody on the other side of the river that wants to buy it. I mean, I'm a little bit troubled by how this whole thing was handled. I'm also a little bit troubled by, um, I understand what you're saying about wanting to have what's going to be the best long term, but, but I, I know that because we fund Main Street, that Main Street is not a flush entity, and to leave money on the table, I mean, you keep using the term gouging, which I don't think anybody's gouging anybody, but, uh, but to get the highest price. I mean, that's what we do with real estate is try and sell it to the highest bidder. And, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit troubled by how this whole thing went. I would tend to agree with uh, Councilman Jones that maybe we should table this and have further discussion or have a, have a more public uh, bid process or, or something so everybody's on the same page. But. Okay. Uh, does anyone else have further comment or further questions for Mr. Kurtz? I do. What, um, Ms. what is the current assessed value of that property? Uh, I don't have that in front of me. The current uh, debt on the property is uh, 230 plus thousand. Further for Mr. Kurtz? Mr. Greenwood? Refresh my memory how this came about. It started out with the, with the uh, re rejuvenation of the Osco building, was it? Wasn't there a wall falling down there and then... Uh, yes, before my time, but then, yes, there, the had, uh, redevelopment of the, that block, uh, this, the property that now consists of the regional business center. Nice. Um, there was property that existed in that lot that was removed. And maybe Noel or someone else can speak to the process that led up to Main Street owning it. But the long and the short of it is, you know, when I started two years ago, uh, Main Street owned it. The debt level is high. Uh, we consider it a liability. Uh, we simply want out of the proper ship owner ownership business. Uh, we want it to be in the hands of the, the best uh, future user, so. Thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Much appreciated. Mr. Deeds. Here, uh, I'm the J controller for JSA, and I believe I actually penned the letter that you Name and address. Mm -hmm. this call. Yeah, sure. David Deeds, uh, 922 Mulberry's home address. Um, as I said, I'm the controller, and I believe I penned that offer letter that yes. was back in September. Uh, <clears throat> You know, from our perspective, again, we're just another party in this. And we, we, when we had heard, actually, probably going back as far as Jeff's uh, arrival at uh, Main Street, that there was an interest in basically taking this burden off of Main Street's shoulders. Uh, I think the discussions uh, with all the parties, from my understanding, again, and I wasn't part of those, we're just simply here as JSA, uh, was, you know, kind of came to a head late summer and we submitted an offer. And the <coughs> offer that you, we, you see in front of you is to pay the, the remaining debt balance down, which is actually in excess of $230,000. It's 233 or somewhere in that neighborhood. So uh, we had also agreed to allow Main Street to continue to reap the 7% of uh, rent collected rents off of this, uh, from the management of this 
property. And um, the uh, basically, we, we have acquired several properties. And of course, the Beecher firm is an adjoining property owner. We have several properties that adjoin this parcel, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of, I think, some about 400 foot of frontage. Uh, if you look around the street fronts that, that surround this block. So we have a significant presence around that block as well, and we have continued to redevelop in that block, and that's why it's important to us, and I certainly understand why it's important to the Beecher firm as well, but you know, we're, we're taking upper story spaces, we're creating uh, new uh, apartments. There's three apartments being under, constru under construction right now, which will be completed uh, 1st of February, 1st of March, you know, where we put in simply in those apartments nearly, by the time we're done, about $800,000 just in those three apartments and rehab of the building as a whole so that these buildings can last another 100 years. We have two other adjacent properties, one recently acquired, which requires a, a potentially a fair amount of parking that we intend to s s put at least $2 million. You know, we were trying to be, we'd not, not overcommit ourselves to what we were going to spend in downtown in the next uh, 24 months and certainly continue to <clears throat> create those exciting spaces filled with people that we we all want for our downtown uh, in terms of, I think the question about assessed value came up I think it's somewhere in the neighborhood of sixty thousand dollars at this point so regardless of the number that you end up at we're, you're still essentially talking four times what the assessed value current assessed value is on that uh, we submitted our bid which you see in front of you it is certainly more complex than a simple dollar amount uh, because we view this as an important part in that block and an important part of, important part of downtown east side redevelopment. Uh, longer term, uh, well, for, in the short term, certainly in the immediate term, the medium term, medium term, we really expect that business to continue as is. We're not going to be kicking people out of this parking lot if they rent a space in there, continue to rent a space in there. We're not intending in the near term to medium term to do anything to rental rates. Uh, you know, those are all things that Basically, we are taking a lot of the financial burden, the financial responsibility, the downside, if you will, off of Main Street's shoulders. You know, if something happens to that parking lot, it's going to be on us. And we're going to need to take care of it. So uh, certainly be welcome to have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Deeds. Uh, Council, do you have any questions of Mr. Deeds? I, I just had one quick question. So, David, are you saying that if you don't get this parking lot, you're not going to do the $2 million in improvements? Is that what I'm hearing? It certainly starts to make it more difficult. You know, it, I can't say exactly what we're going to do with that parking lot. However, one of our concepts at this point is to actually create additional parking in that space, not to reduce the amount of parking available in that block, but to add additional parking in that block. Uh, and again, it's, it's a concept at this point. I can't guarantee that that's exactly what we're going to propose, but certainly uh, that's an important block. The block across the street are important blocks when it comes to the nexus of uh, activity within certainly the east side of downtown Waterloo. Thank you, Mr. Dates. Anyone else have questions? Mr. Green? The, the property you, uh, GSA owns pretty much the whole uh, length of 4th Street between Lafayette and Sycamore on that side of the street? Uh, we own uh, the Fowler building and the Hoffa building, which are 100 feet on Lafayette and 100 feet on 4th Street. Down at the other end of that same side on 4th Street, we own 100 feet of frontage there from 206 to, I'm sorry, 208 East 4th to 200 East 4th, which is the First National Building. We own 130 feet of frontage roughly down Sycamore at this point. Um, you know, uh, that's just obviously the right around that block. You know, GSA has invested uh, approximately $10 million in downtown in the last five years. Anything further, Mr. Dietz? Thank you, David, very much. Uh, I would give opportunity to, to feature, please, if you'd like to have comments. Well, <clears throat> I, my name's Hugh Field. I live at uh, 561 Sunset, and I'm uh, also a uh, member of the Beecher Firm and uh, actually the Court Square Company that uh, owns the building. We, uh, I don't know, it, it seems like uh, it has been ages that we have been making offers uh, to try to purchase this property. Uh, uh, I know that our conversations with uh, the downtown development group have gone back to as far as when uh, George Warren was the <coughs> the, uh, the head of the develop of downtown the downtown Waterloo group. Uh, we met uh, numerous times with Mayor Hurley, uh, and we've been attempting to buy this uh, this property, which uh, we view as uh, as really essential for us in, in being in downtown Waterloo and having parking for our 
for our employees. As uh, Eric said, we have uh, invested uh, quite a lot in our building and we think we've been good uh, uh, stewards of our building and we've been uh, in downtown Waterloo for a long time, uh, over 90 years. Uh, it's our desire to stay there and we expect to stay there in the light of the fact uh, the amount of money we've spent on the building uh, in the last uh, year and a half or two years. Uh, I, I, I say this out of no animus to uh, JSA. I, uh, I personally consider uh, Mr. Walsh, uh, who I understand is the owner, to be a friend and, uh, um, and a colleague in the law business. Uh, I am concerned that we continue to have parking for our building and for our employees. Uh, it will make it very difficult for us uh, to be in a situation where we don't. Uh, I have to be honest. Uh, my belief is that uh, whatever the JSA plans for Waterloo, uh, for downtown Waterloo, will happen whether they have this piece of ground or not. They are, it's a parking lot. That's the best use for it. Uh, and probably into the future is the best use for it. And, what, and the use will continue. Uh, I want to also make clear that uh, we didn't know about the offer that was made to Main Street with regard to uh, to, main, to uh, managing the property. I want to make very clear uh, that, uh, as Eric indicated before, we would uh, view it as a favor, as a matter of fact, to pay 7% uh, to Main Street to manage the, the parking lot. Uh, we, that's uh, our office manager, uh, when we suggested uh, how much uh, it, would, uh, it would cost, uh, rolled her eyes when we suggested that she would uh, manage it for that, at that expense. And, we would, uh, we would be more than happy to make that part of uh, the offer that we've made. Uh, we'd ask you to, I think the suggestion to table this is, is a good idea. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what uh, rights the city has, um, and that uh, has never been very clear to me. Uh, I assume you have an option. Uh, if you do, I guess I would ask you to exercise it and give us the uh, opportunity to buy this at, uh, at the higher price. Thank you, Mr. Field. Thank you. There questions of Mr. Field. Thank you, Council. I, unless there's uh, others to speak, I'll, I'll give my feeble attempt at, at trying to answer. Uh, yes, sir. Forest Dillevue, 1725 Huntington Road. I obviously have no interest in this property one way or the other who gets it. But as a taxpayer, I would encourage you to, whenever possible, get the most money you can. Like was mentioned by one of the councilmen, you have had in the past <coughs> pieces of property that sold for less than the high bid, <clears throat> but that was with development agreements. If you go with JSA, <clears throat> it would be my assumption that you're saying, Mr. Big Guy, you can have it all. The rest of you take a back seat and wait. You know, if there's something they don't want, you can have it. I would like to see you <clears throat> sell this for the highest bid for the taxpayers and for the people that want it. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Delvu. Uh, again, I'll, I'll try to have, yes, sir. Mike Butler, 1022 Washington Street, Cedar Falls. I'm the vice president of the Main Street Group, and for the most part, I did not intend to speak, but I, I wanted to reiterate two things. One, we really don't care who buys the property. However, uh, we went out to four entities that we thought were the most likely to be able to buy it. Two of them, one of them being the city, said no, absolutely not. Uh, JSA came in with a bid. Our board voted on that bid without ever knowing what uh, Beecher was doing, but they had been notified, as Eric said, they met months earlier. So we did that in good faith based on accepting one bid. We did not try to compete with them or have them compete with each other. And, and I would say I think it's about $2,500 that we would get each year for managing the property. Thank you, question. Mr. Butler. I have a question. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, um, that leads me back to, I think, a comment Mr. Schmidt or Mr. Greenwood had made um, about the process. Was there a date that they were given that they needed to have a proposal in before the board was going to vote? For instance, if the board voted on this in September, 
did they have to have the proposals in by September or did they have to have them in by October? But was there a date that you got these proposals and then you took them to the board and the board voted on the individual proposals or did they just vote on the one proposal that you received on September, September 5th from JSA? I do not believe anyone was given a date. We were just so gratified that we had an offer. Right. That when we had it, we reviewed it, we accepted it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Uh, in answering Mr. Fields' questions, and again, this is my feeble attempt, and Noel, if you could help me, Mr. Anderson, if you could help me if I say this wrong, please do. But uh, the city has no ownership in the land, uh, in, in the parking lot whatsoever. However, we do ha are the we are the guarantor of the note that's being held on that land, and we do have a right of first refusal on that land, uh, and we do have the authority to authorize the sale of the land because we are the guarantor. Uh, in in the end, uh, I don't know that the, the council uh, wants anything but the best for the city. Also, uh, I would I would caution us tabling this particular item without a reason to table it and without some direction. Uh, I think going back to the bid process now is, is going to be difficult because everybody kind of knows where everybody is with what we've done up to this point. Uh, I would ask Mr. Walsh for his direction not on anything about this but strictly if I say procedurally something wrong. So as I go through this but... I can't but, give you any legal advice on this uh, issue. Okay. So. Well, maybe... <laughs> if you need legal advice, we'll have to get somebody else. Okay. I'm just talking about procedurally here. I, I think what we have as an option tonight is to approve it as it is written or to deny it as it is written, which is basically stops the process and gives it um, back to Main Street uh, to make a motion to do something else with it, uh, with instructions, but simply tabling it without any instructions to do anything with it, I think is a mistake. I mean, we're just basically kicking the can down the road. So uh, I would caution tabling on this without some pretty direct instructions and timeline as to what you want done, Council. We have two offers on, on the table. You can, you can make a motion to deny this one and accept the other one, or you can make a motion to accept this one, or you can make an, a motion to table. But, uh, boy, it, it, if there is a motion to table, I mean, we've got a lot of information out here tonight. I'm not sure what more information we can get. So the table to get more information to me is kind of a waste of time. If you're going to table it, tell us why you're tabling it and what you want. The, the only question I had about it is the 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 September 5th JSA proposal from what I'm being led to believe went to the board and the board voted in support of it. Then we, then we have another one that went on October 4th. If this one was already approved, then what was the purpose of getting the one in October 4th? Was that given the same consideration to the board as the one on September 5th? Mr. That's Kurtz, can you answer that question? <clears throat> I can, and I don't know that it's productive to go into all the different meetings and all the different conversations that have been undertaken uh, since this project was undertaken in January. There have been hours and hours and hours of it. Um, but long story short, um, due to whatever miscommunication occurred, we had not received the offer from the Beecher Law Firm uh, when the board acted upon the uh, offer from JSA. So we were, despite several conversations, unaware of their interest in the property. When we received that interest, we felt compelled to give it the same consideration that JSA's offer received. We stopped the process. We took it off the city's agenda. We met again. We considered both of those offers. We made a decision, and here we are again. I think it's very unlikely that we would reverse our decision at this point. What would probably happen is that if you, as the mayor says, kick the can down the road, We'll sit on it. We don't want to do that, but we're, we're not going to continue to be jockeyed as an organization between these two law firms that is in no one's best interest. Thank you. Bingo. Thank you, Mr. Kurtz. Uh, there is a motion on the floor and a second to adopt the resolution as it was read. If, if somebody wants to make a, a motion to, to table with directions, now would be the time to do so, and I'll give you that opportunity if somebody would like to make that. If not, we're going to have a vote on the 
uh, uh, the motion as it was read, keeping in mind that if it fails, another motion could be made after that. Mr. Barrett. Uh, Mr. Greenwood. Uh, this, uh, for the JSA for David, uh, could, could you expand a little bit uh, upon uh, plans that you may have for, for it? Are you just going to leave it, sit as a parking lot, as is, lease it to the uh, people that are being leased to now? Uh, because you, you looks like you, uh, just in the, uh, in the uh, first national building, you are planning on converting that into uh, condos there? Yeah. Um, and there's, what's that, a seven-story building? Eight. Eight, eight. Eight. Yeah. Um, we had in, in the short in the short term and the near term because uh, redevelopments of large pro let me back up because of re redevelopments of large projects like the first national building takes uh, up to a couple year period to secure tax credits for historic tax credits I should say uh, it can be a while before anything significant is going to happen on the first national building but we certainly intend to start that process and actually have uh, started the conversations at least but back to the parking lot specifically in the near term the medium term we expect to basically operate the parking lot as is you know the existing tenants stay there the existing rates stay there uh, manage actually the, the face that uh, the tenants will deal with for their issues will continue to be the Main Street face because we're paying them the 7% fee now, having said that our, our plans current plans for the first national building which do via an alley abut this property uh, is to take the top two floors of that building and convert those to residential uses. Uh, certainly, uh, if you can imagine views, there are very few views around downtown that offer seventh and eighth story views. And, and along with those spaces, we expect higher and higher, client, higher and clientele and, of course, some expectations of parking that would probably come with it. Which comes back to my comment earlier that, if anything, our plan for that parking lot would actually increase capacity within that block as opposed to decreasing capacity. Uh, by adding essentially a second deck is the current thought process. Again, can't say that that's the, the case right now. That's where we'll end up at, but that's our current thought process. Um, you know, obviously I think everybody sees the problem here is, is that if we do table it is like, uh, well, certainly I could stand here today and say, okay, well, we'll match the, the Beecher offer. Then what happens? I mean, do we just sit here and have an auction right here at this podium? You know, so certainly I think we're asking everyone to look at ours simply in terms of the holistic approach to downtown and what this, this can do for downtown, coupled with all the re redevelopments that we're doing in adjacent blocks, that, that block and adjacent blocks. Thank you, Mr. Deeds. Does that answer your question, Mr. Greenwood? You know, I just, uh, could the Johnson? <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's have one more argument here and then, no. then take a vote. Mr. Johnson. Well, Mayor, Council Members, if you're going to accept this rationale that they're the biggest property developer downtown, and since they're the biggest property developer downtown, that's in the city's best interests, then it doesn't matter what we offer. Every property that comes up for sale, they should be able to acquire because they're the biggest property owner downtown. If you follow that rationale to its conclusion, it doesn't make sense. There's not a specific project that they've tied this to. It just We've done a lot, and we're going to do a lot in the future. You know, we'll hold our record of our law firm out against what they've done, too. I mean, the record and rationale don't hold up. What makes sense is we've offered more money, and we should be able to buy it. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Did you have any more about Without, uh, did you have any more? I was just going to ask uh, how many, how much park, uh, the, the parking across the street, uh, who, who owns that? How many parking places are in there? Are they all leased? What would be across Lafayette? Across Lafayette, no Anderson Community Planning Development Director. The city owns a portion of that. Um, JSA owns a portion of that. Structure Architects owns a portion of that. Parking overall over there. So there's a mixture of all the different uh, property owners in that block. If I could, Mayor. Mr. Um, not that anyone likes to table anything. You know, there's a lot of great minds talking about this project on both sides. They're, these are both great uh, firms in our community, anchor tenants in downtown. You know, perhaps it would be best to table it for three to four weeks. Um, I would be more than happy to try to bring the two sides together and see if there's a, a happy meeting in there somewhere, um, at least so that we can say we have tried that to see if there's some way to make this work for both parties. 
Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. So I would uh, not be interested in kicking the can down the road, although I sit and look at a council of uh, seven lay people <clears throat> being stuck between two prodigious accounting or uh, legal firms. Um, but my motion to table would be uh, for a period of three weeks, four weeks, I'm open to that. But, you know, I just think this whole process has been mishandled. I think it's been convoluted. I don't think it's been transparent and not intentionally on anybody's part, but that's just the way it's evolved. When we've got a law firm that tells us for seven years they've been attempting to buy this property, and then they find out, you know, after some date that they weren't aware of that there had already been a, a approval of a sale, I mean, it, something just doesn't uh, seem to flow right. And so, and then compounding with what Noel said, you know, what might be a real nice uh, uh, result of this would be that the two law firms go together in partnership and buy that lot and maybe they build a parking <laughs> ramp uh, because it sounds like, I'm glad I'm entertaining you, Carolyn, um, that that, uh, that would be in the best interest wow. of uh, the law firm, uh, the Beecher Law Firm and the development. So maybe that would lead to that, but that would be my, my reason for the motion would be, I think this has been mishandled. Uh, I think if we give it a specific time frame, and if Noel uh, would be willing to uh, mediate the process, uh, I think it would be in the best interest of the taxpayers, which is ultimately who we're here to, to uh, speak for. So that's my motion. That was a motion. That was a motion. There's four a weeks. Motion, motion to table for four weeks uh, with the direction to have Mr. Anderson be the negotiator, mediator, whatever. And if somebody else wants to enter the conversation, God bless them. I'll second his motion. Okay, there's a motion to second to table. Madam Clerk, uh, would you read the roll for us? Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, if I could. In four weeks, we'll be having a meeting. We aren't yes. entering into any holidays or anything like that. Okay. That's to include the one that we're not having one on, so th three council meetings from okay. now. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Um, yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cool? No. Very good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our resolution tonight is to table this. Uh, and we will have conversation with, uh, I'm assuming, Noel, you're, you just uh, put quite a load on your shoulders there to try to work this out. But, uh, I, I do think, uh, you know, Mr. Schmidt's comments were true. But, you know, this, you, you, everybody is very good uh, uh, citizens of Waterloo, of downtown Waterloo, and we want the best for both you guys and the city. So, Noel. It's your job to figure this out, and we'll have it back in four weeks. So thank you all for being here. Mr. Mayor. Let's move to number 13 and 14, please. Mr. Hart. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution approving revised collective bargaining <coughs> agreement with International Association of Firefighters, local number 66, to include fire marshal and fire captains. 14, I move to adopt a resolution approving recommendation of award of contract to DB Acoustics, Inc. of Marion, Iowa in the amount of $71,995 and approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance for the five Sullivan Brothers Convention Center audiovisual sound system and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding 13 or 14? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Gaddy. I've got a question on item 13. Why, okay. would, why would we want management people to be put into the collective bargaining unit? Well, uh, not that we necessarily want them in there, uh, Mr. Getty, but uh, they have applied, and there's no reason uh, that we saw to legally deny them. Uh, so the, the, the issue is now in front of you, whether you want to allow the uh, uh, fire marshal and the fire captains to become bargain unit or not. That's why the question is in front of you. Thanks, Ms. Cole. I have a question as well. The captains are going to retain their seniority when it comes to vacation and holidays and Kelly days. I have, gone, I have Googled Kelly days and I get sent to the Chicago website going back in history on what are Kelly days and could someone explain to me in 25 words or less, what a Kelly day you know, is. It, 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 I, I know you're looking at Chief, uh, Chief Trelka, but it might be more appropriate, uh, Ms. Cole, if you don't mind, if the clerk answers that. It, it, she's intimately involved with this. Excellent. <laughs> Kelly days, the very shortened version, is with the Fair Labor Standards Act, you're only allowed to work so many hours 
for certain periods of time. And when firefighters work too many shifts, we have to give them a day off to reset that cycle so that by the Fair Labor Standards Act under the federal rules, we aren't in violation and overworking. So if you them. work more than 40 hours a week? And for firefighters, it's very different. They're on like a 27 day cycle. It's, it's, it's not as, it's a lot more complicated than us for 40 hours in a week, but it's, it's similar. Um, and so it's very specific to firefighters because they work the 24 hour shifts. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it goes on like a 72 hour and 27 day cycle. And it's, it's very complex. Um, it's and that extra day is called the Kelly day. That is what that extra day is. And it's basically to re they have to take it off. It's kind of um, the way I think of it is when um, truck drivers have to sit for a certain period of time that's that's why they built those in to reset that cycle and give them time off so that they're not working too many hours in a Ms. Cole could you do a better a job of answering Mr. Getty's question than I did Ms. Shears. Maybe? Yes. Oh, Ms. Shears, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was um, waiting I promise good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree with Mr. Um, Mayor Clark's comments on, on not necessarily wanting management in there um, but we have had it reviewed by our attorneys and have found that we would not likely be able to stop captains or fire marshals from entering the bargaining unit um, based on their duties and and what our state <coughs> laws are as far as allowing people into bargaining units they're they're pretty broad and um, it's it's pretty impossible in these two specific positions to not allow them we've been advised by legal counsel that it would be in our best interest to settle this one. Advised by who? Our legal counsel from the morning. Mr. Mayor, uh, and uh, maybe this is a question for Susie too, but I mean, ultimately, if we back up a little bit, isn't where this came from the fact that the bargaining unit got raises last contract, the non-bargaining did not, so they've decided they want to be bargaining. I mean, isn't that it in a nutshell? Mm -hmm. That is a very strong argument. Um, my understanding is that, and I've only been here for three years, but my understanding is that this has happened, that has happened on more than one occasion, and they just want to guarantee that they are given the same benefits that all of their coworkers are given. So that is the reason. Thank you. Further questions? Roll call vote on 13 and 14, please. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? No on 13. Yes on 14. Mr. Schmidt? No on 13. Yes on 14. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? No on 13. Yes on 14. Mr. Getty? No on 13. Yes on 14. Okay, uh, if, if I counter right, uh, Madam Clerk, uh, item number 13 failed. Yes. And item number 14 passed. Yeah. Let me correct. Item number 15, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the ordinance amending <laughs> the 2008 <laughs> traffic code by adding subsection 20A. 7th Street E to Section 549 Loading Zones, an ordinance change adding a loading zone on the east side of the 300 block of East 7th Street. Second. Uh, questions or comments about this item, Council? Roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to consider and pass for the second and third time and adopt, and adopt the ordinance. Second. And that's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 16, please. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I move we instructs community development director to prepare plans, specs, form of contract for demolition and site clearance for the following properties, 523 Dawson, 311 Adams, 426 Adams, 635 Sumner, 
109 Oneida, 106 Lynn, and the garage only at 203 Dane Street. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion carries. <coughs> I move that we receive and file plan specs form of contract. Second. Council, do you have any questions regarding this? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. I move we adopt a resolution preliminarily approving plan specs form of contract, et cetera. Second. It's a roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Motion carries. I move we adopt a resolution setting date of hearing and bid opening as January 28th and instruct City Clerk to publish notice of plan, specs, form of contract. Second. The roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. <coughs> Motion carries. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our regularly scheduled business tonight for the Waterloo City Council. It's time for oral presentations. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the mayor or the council, now's the time to do so. Please approach the microphone, give us your name and address, and please limit your comments to three minutes. Uh, Theodore Lederman, 1758 Pinehurst Lane, Waterloo. Thank you, sir. Okay. So uh, I'm a retired physician. I've lived here, I'm 68 years old, my entire life, except when I was training and in the U.S. Army. Uh, last week, you decided uh, on San Martin to move the highway or the road uh, for uh, up-level uh, housing on the country club. Uh, I'm sorry I wasn't here for the meeting, but I have, some, I have some specific questions to ask about it, and I want to state something that I personally feel is wrong. If you look at from Kimball to West Forth on San Martin, that's becoming a commercial throughway. You have tremendous traffic there. Uh, I question whether anyone would really want to have luxury housing in that area. Uh, you have people who come to Waterloo who have good incomes to this area to work. They're basically choosing to work in Waterloo and living in Cedar Falls or living in Hudson because tax rates are lower, utilities are lower, uh, media are lower, uh, crime is lower and education is better and then and also the zoning is better because the zoning in Cedar Falls if you have a good neighborhood you have a good neighborhood in Waterloo in very few areas do you have a good neighborhood where we live which is on the country club we bought the house 32 years ago was supposed to be a good neighborhood and I'm not complaining about the neighborhood but then you have higher income housing, lower income housing, condos, apartments, and subsidized housing within three blocks. So our zoning in Waterloo is very, very poor. Also on Pinehurst Lane, where I am living, uh, the zone, the original developers, I believe, put in faulty and inexpensive uh, roadway. So the roadway after a few years had to be torn up because it was essentially gravel new roadway had to be put in. So my specific questions are for the developers. Number one, on San Martin, is the San Martin roadway going to be built to the same specifications as the current roadway? In other words, is the city going to have to rebuild San Martin in five or six years because the quality of the construction will be less than optimum? Number two, uh, the same question pertains to the roads in the developed area. Are they going to be up to city standards? Or are they going to be uh, substandard? Number three, this is being built on city property with a cost of $1. I'm wondering in three years from now, when they can't get 28 luxury homes, are they going to come back to rezone it? to have duplexes, to have condos, to have apartments, to have low-income homes. Are we going to maintain the zoning three years from now, five years from now, from this supposed luxury housing? Because they're going to have trouble putting in enough people to pay their costs. So I'd like to know those answers. 
Donald, do you want to attempt some of them? Thank or you. All of them, please. And Dr. Lieberman, before you sit down, just uh, for a matter of record, I, I, I'm not going to go into all the specifics, but I hope you don't mind if I disagree with most of what you said. That's fine. I, I can disagree with you also. Certainly. Thank you. Noel Anderson, Community Planning <laughs> Development Director. Um, obviously, the, uh, the rebuilding of San Martin Road um, would have to go through a platting process. Um, the design specifications would be reviewed by the city engineer's office, so they should be similar to what's uh, regularly built in our uh, road reconstruction program as we have set standards for new roads. And, and Eric Thorson may want to correct me on anything or, or add to. Um, I didn't understand the question about the roads in the redeveloped area. Yes, are they going to be to the same standards as city roads? Are they going to be inferior roads? I mean, right now they are showing the relocation of San Marnin as the only other road, so their driveways would come off of that. So that would be the only road built right, but in they what they have be, shown us. But they will be putting roads in, I would assume. No, they would have driveways straight off of San Marnin. Okay. And on city property for a dollar, not 28 homes, um, you talked about rezoning that in the future for different uses, and obviously that's, that's difficult to answer. Um, that would have to come back to the council um, as a rezoning request as a part of that. Um, abutting neighbors get uh, notified as a part of that. But again, that would be up to a city council in the future to make that decision. What is the zoning for it now? What is it going zoning to be right now is R1 uh, low density residential. Okay. The development agreement, though, Mr. Anderson, uh, for Mr. Lederman's benefit, requires the developer to build X number of homes at, at a certain level. Uh, isn't that correct? I don't have that file with me, obviously. Um, it does require the, the platting, or the, it shows the uh, description of the project as for, I think it's 27 or 28 new single family lots um, as a part of the project. Thank you. Mr. Lederman, we can't predict the future, obviously. No. But, uh, Thank but you I, you know, I think this is a great project, and this project will help do and help answer many of the things that you mentioned about low taxes and new housing and all of that stuff. This is a first-class project with a first-class developer and contractor, <coughs> and I'm excited about it, and I think it's, it's going to be very positive for the city. Mr. So Mayor, you. to answer you, uh, you uh, 30, 35 years ago, when the Country Club was uh, new and they were developing residential housing, around the country club, uh, and it was supposed to be luxury housing. Uh, if you look at Pinehurst Lane, which is one of the streets abutting the country club, you'll see what I mean about the zoning. Okay. So what happened is, living there, what happened is because the developers could not get enough high income houses, okay, you went to lower income houses, you went to condos, you went to apartment, and then you went to subsidized housing within a three block area. Okay. So I understand what you're saying and I hope you're right, but I'm saying in the past, it isn't always true. Thank you, Mr. Leading. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to Mayor or Council? Motion to receive. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. If I could, just real quickly, I did want to uh, mention, I know some people chuckle about this, but. The folks that are watching at home, I did want to mention to them that we are going to start budget hearings tomorrow at 4 o'clock, and those are going to be televised, correct? That's correct. And they're going to be at 4, 5, and 6 tomorrow. That's correct. And then do we know Wednesday, Thursday yet what the schedule is? We or? don't have a schedule for Wednesday, okay. Thursday yet, Mr. Is there, I, not, I don't know if there's any way once we get that set, because I, I do think, while I don't think there's going to be a lot of people in the room, uh, I do think there's going to be a lot of people watching on TV if they know what it's on. So anything we can do to publicize that uh, on Channel 15 or whatever I think would be beneficial. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Motion okay. to receive and file oral comments and adjourn to executive session. Second. Uh, Mr. Walsh, are we adjourning to executive session? The purpose the of the, yeah, the purpose of the executive session is to discuss litigation and that's permissible reason for closed session under 21.51C. You have to have a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Getty? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Greenwood? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Very good. Thank you. The motion carries. We're adjourned to executive session. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.